Hi, thank you for tuning in to MCPS's Virtual Mental Health Fair. I'm Jill Bonenkamp. I'm a clinical and school psychologist and core faculty at the National Center for School Mental Health. And I'll be talking today about promoting mental health and well being in the face of adversity. Just by tuning in today, you are demonstrating your willingness to support your family during this unprecedented year. So I know this is an intense time with many competing demands. In the next 15 minutes, I'll talk about building resiliency in the face of adversity, practical strategies that you can use now to promote mental health and well-being for your entire family. I'll review symptoms of a mental health concern because often our children don't say, I'm feeling sad or depressed. And most importantly, I'm going to highlight the wealth of resources that you can look into as next steps to promote mental health and to seek help and really paying attention to the amazing resources that you have within your own school system. So first, let me tell you a bit more about our center. The National Center for School Mental Health at the University of Maryland School of Medicine is funded in part by the Health Resources and Services Administration to lead the national quality initiative focused on comprehensive school mental health systems. Our mission is to strengthen the policies and programs in school mental health to improve learning and promote success for America's youth. We focus on advancing school mental health research, training, policy, and practice at the local, state, and national federal levels. And we've led training, research, practice, and policy efforts to support evidence-based, innovative school mental health programming and training for diverse school, family, and community stakeholders in the U.S. starting in 19, since 1995. We have a number of resources to support youth and families on our website, schoolmentalhealth.org, which I'll talk more about. All right, so let's get started. So when we're talking about building resiliency, what do we mean by resilience? So resilience is adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. And we know that this year has been filled with those. And so turning to the research on what we can do to foster resilience for ourselves and our family is critical to promote mental health and well-being. So how do we do that? How do we get from this photo to one of resilience? And the first step is to admit that we're not okay. So if we were in this rainstorm in this photo and our umbrella broke, we'd probably tell people about this and admit that we had a pretty bad day. But oftentimes with larger issues, we don't wanna admit it's not going well and may be fearful of stigma. But this is really our critical first step in getting support. So just like if you told a friend about this day um, where your umbrella broke and you were caught in the rain, you'd likely get an outpouring of support. And this is exactly what we need to be doing this year and your school system has many resources to help. So one of the most critical strategies that we know from the resilience literature is this importance of building connections. And as we're looking at this image, we can already feel more positive, this idea that there's someone else under the umbrella, someone else there to support us. And so it's really critical during intense times that we're prioritizing relationships, that we're connecting with empathetic and understanding people that can help to remind us that we're not alone. And so we wanna make sure that we're focusing on finding and relying on trustworthy and compassionate individuals who help to validate our feelings and help to support us. And oftentimes the pain of a traumatic event can lead us to isolate ourselves, but it's important to accept help and support from others. So I'm gonna highlight some additional things that we know from the literature about what helps us to build resilience. And then I'm gonna break it down into very tangible action steps that you can get started with today. So we talked about the importance of building connections. 
And now we wanna talk about fostering wellness. This idea of taking care of your body, promoting positive lifestyle factors like good nutrition, getting good sleep, making sure we're drinking water and staying hydrated and regular exercise. And the reason these things are important is that they help to strengthen our body, which makes us more able to adapt to stress and reduce the toll of emotions like anxiety and depression. We can foster wellness by practicing mindfulness, so thinking about mindful journey, journaling or yoga or other practices. And we wanna think about avoiding negative outlets. So it may be tempting to mask pain with alcohol, drugs, or other substances, but it's just like putting a Band-Aid on a deep, deep wound. So instead, we really wanna focus on giving our body the resources to manage stress, rather than seeking to eliminate the feeling of stress altogether. Resilience isn't about being in a place without adversity. It's about still being able to do things to thrive in spite of traumatic things that have happened or are still happening. And these next strategies on the list are about a mindset or activity shift. So instead of focusing on what we can't do, how do we find purpose and how do we move forward? So how do we find purpose? How can we help others? how can we be proactive? So how can we think about asking ourselves, what can I do about what's going on in my life? What do I have control over? And what can I do to move towards my goals? So thinking about developing some realistic goals and things that we can do to help us to move in that direction. So instead of thinking about a task that seems unachievable, how do we ask ourselves, what's one thing I know I can accomplish today that helps me to move in the direction I want to go? When we're thinking about building resiliency, it's critical that we accept change, we acknowledge those things that we can't change, and that helps us to move in a direction of thinking about the things that we can change or we can alter, and helps us to move towards this idea of maintaining hope and a critical factor in building resilience is not doing it alone, that we're reaching out and seeking help. So this is an awesome resource on the MCPS website with very clear student strategies for students. So if we have students tuning in, uh, here are things specifically that you can think about during your day to help to support and build resilience. So this idea of building connections, staying in regular touch with friends, through virtual platforms or social distance platforms, making sure that you're engaging in regular exercise and doing this in a fun way, listening to music, uh, anything to get, get moving. Don't be afraid to check in with your friends and family, asking them how they're doing and see if there's ways that you can help them or ways that they can help to support you. Challenge yourself each day to think about what you can do this day and in the present moment. Reduce the amount of time that you spend on social media and checking the news because this regular checking can really increase worry. And think about scheduling a time each day where you can sit down with your family and talk about what you're thinking about and how you're feeling, good or bad. We talked about taking care of your physical health Make sure you're thinking about getting sleep and eating well and thinking about doing practices to help to focus on your breathing, to help to calm down your mind and body. And most importantly, if you're struggling, not to be afraid to reach out for help. So speak to your friends, families, or teachers for support. And so here are some concrete strategies that you can do as a caregiver to support your child's mental health. So you can think about building in rest time. And this is especially important in really intense times and knowing that we're under additional stress. So how can you help your child to build in some time for some downtime and for some recharge time, knowing that this, this is even more important now? How do we be patient with ourselves, with our families, with others, knowing that we're in the midst of this downpouring rainstorm? So how do we make sure that we're acknowledging that, knowing that that's where we are, where we are and being patient with ourselves and those around us? A really great strategy 
for building resilience and things you can do in the moment is this idea of being proud of your child. I'm sure there are many times throughout the day where you're proud of how your child is doing, how they're managing this difficult time. And so sharing that with them, highlighting what you think is awesome about what they're doing, uh, and also being willing to listen and talk about feelings that your child is having, giving them a space to talk about their day, both the good things happening and the bad things. So when you're thinking about wellness strategies, these are some of the top buckets that we want to think about. You want to make sure that you're talking with each other, acknowledging feelings, even difficult ones, that you're being patient and proud and thinking about caring and loving one another that you're thinking about planning safe, positive activities. These don't have to be big activities, but thinking about how do you intentionally schedule in positive things in your day? This could be listening to music or taking a walk or doing some sort of activity that you'd like to do with your family or something that gives you an opportunity to recharge and having this for yourself as parents and caregivers, but also thinking about things that you can help to support for your child. And this important strategy, and what uh, we'll talk about so much today is this importance of being connected. That you wanna have someone else under the umbrella with you and that they may have another umbrella or other strategies and that it's really critical that you're reaching out for support and help. So as I mentioned before, kids don't always, always tell us that they're feeling sad or frustrated and it's important that we pay attention to these potential signs. So kids' sadness about their current situation, um, they might not say I'm angry, but it might come across as this stupid remote doesn't work, or I'm not doing four math problems, I'm only doing one, or I didn't want lasagna for dinner, I, I wanted tacos. And um, it's important that, that we pay attention to these potential signs because we can have more empathy and patience for these signs for when we see them for what they really are. And more importantly, we can address them. So instead of getting into a power struggle um, over the tacos or misbehavior, we can think about options for choice and for control. And you know your child best. And so you wanna pay attention to is the way uh, things are going today or the way they're acting or feeling today different um, than they normally would? And is this getting in the way of you know, the way that they're able to um, go through their day-to-day -day functioning. So we know that this is an intense time for all youth and families, but I also wanna highlight some additional symptoms that may indicate the need for additional mental health supports. So you wanna be on the lookout for if your child is having more of some of these symptoms that you haven't seen before, such as complaining of aches and pains, spending more time alone, having little energy, being afraid of new situations, feeling sad, unhappy, irritable, or angry, or feeling hopeless, less interested in spending time with friends, having trouble sleeping or worrying a lot. And we especially want to look out for any signs that feel especially worrisome, especially about feeling like saying things like they don't enjoy things that they used to be or wishing that they um, we're doing better. We want to pay attention to any of these signs and really take them seriously as ways, as indicators that kids may need additional support and really helping to get them connected. Because it's not often that our, our children will say, I'm feeling depressed and this is going really badly for me. And so we need to be on the lookout for these symptoms. And you have many resources within NCPS to reach out for help, to promote mental health and well-being, as well as to address potential mental health concerns and get extra support. So Montgomery County Public Schools are dedicated to student, family, and mental health, and they've launched their Be Well 365 work to support students and families in numerous ways. And this support starts at the top. So Superintendent Dr. Jack Smith describes that at MCPS, we are committed to the academic success and to the physical, social, and psychological well-being of every one of our students. Student learning is our purpose, and we know that students perform better academically when they are healthy in body, mind, and spirit.
and that these two go hand in hand, that children who are successful in school are successful in life. So know that you have the full support of your administration that mental health is a priority and that they've put the resources in to support you and your family. They have an entire website dedicated to student mental health and they've embedded services and supports into every school. And I'll highlight some of those and how you can reach out for help. So there are many ways that you can get connected with help and support. And you can start with the folks that you know in your school. If you feel like things are not going well and you need additional support or just wanna ask about things, you can reach out to your classroom teacher and they can get you connected to mental health supports. You can reach out to the school administrator or school counselor or school psychologist. There also are a number of other resources that you can reach out to via text or especially if you feel like you're in a crisis situation, there are, are critical phone numbers here that are important to have on hand that you can reach out to, to text or call for help. And I also wanna call out, I'm sure you're familiar with your school's website, a coronavirus website, but there are a number of resources there to help you from everything from virtual learning to additional meals and services. And, You'll be hearing over the course of this week about additional mental health strategies and supports that are available. So I encourage you to tune in to the rest of this mental health fair to hear more about these services and supports. I also wanna call out this great resource for middle and high school students called Seize the Awkward. It has a number of resources for supporting youth mental health. And as I mentioned, we also have a number of resources on our website, schoolmentalhealth.org, including dedicated pages on COVID-19 and cultural responsiveness and equity, and with sections on these pages that are specifically designed for youth and families. So thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation, and I encourage you to think about one thing that you're going to try today to try to build mental health and wellness. And remember, you can start small. So this can be that you're gonna schedule 15 minutes with your child to do something you both like, like listening to music or getting outside, or deciding today that you're gonna notice something awesome that your child did and share how proud you are of them or sending an email or calling someone on your MCPS team and asking about additional supports. But I encourage you to just get started with these strategies and thank you so much for tuning in.